Hi, I'm Suizetz and this is my blog. And that is my mess. Today I'm going to show you transitions in React and D3. Remember the dancing tree experiment from December? It's built using rich, rich animations. The idea is that you recalculate the positions of every rectangle like 60 times a second. And if you redraw 60 times a second, you get an animation. It's great for examples like this where you need fine-grained control, but it's kind of annoying when you're just trying to build something simple. And that's where transitions come in. You can make something like this without actually thinking about what you're doing. All you do is you render a circle, and then when you mouse over the circle, you say, hey, do a transition, and you get a nice colorful snake. Like this. The truck you just heard in the background, I hope it's gone. Now, the way this works is that we're using D3, we're using React to render a bunch of dots. Um, we're doing 50 by 50, so that's 2,500 dots. We go in a basically a two level loop, renders dots at positions X and Y. We're using D3 scale point as a way to calculate where the dots actually go. So if I change the padding here to, let's say, 50, they should show up closer together, or rather, there's more padding on the sides. And if I change the width, we'll get less of them, or they're going to be more packed together. And then N is for how many of them we want. Basically, what the scale point is doing for us is it's making it so that we give it one parameter, let's say x or y, because we're doing a square, so they're both the same, and turns it into a discrete position for each dot so that they have enough space to show up and all that other stuff. Then <clears throat> each dot is basically a component that has a couple of things going on. At, in the render method, we draw a circle that has a ref, listens for mouse overs, and has a style. The style is important because if colorize is set to true, it shows a color. If it's set to false, it's just black. And this is what makes the snake pretty and colorful. Now, to do the actual transitions, we use D3 transition. So we do a D3 select from this refs dot circle to get the actual DOM node for wrapped in D3 stuff. And we set colorize to true to make it colorful. This, yes, this does trigger a re-render right before we start doing transitions. And no, that doesn't break anything. Uh, and then the transition uh, says that it's changing the radius, H the radius of the circle to 20. It's going to take 250 milliseconds. It's going to use an easing function. And then when it's done, when the transition is over, it's going to transition all the way back to having a radius of 5. And when that's done, we turn off colorization and re-render it again to, so it becomes black. So that's that's basically the transition part. And holy shit, how is there so much traffic at 2 fucking a.m.? Anyway, uh, the way we get the colors is we have a getter for color, which essentially uses a circle circle parameterization trick and to take a linear scale and turn the x and y position of each of each node to a simple parameter that we feed into a into a linear scale that translates it into a range of 0 to 1 and then we feed that into interpolate warm which creates a color uh, and the parameterization trick is that the square of, a radi of the radius of a circle is this equals x squared plus y squared. Very important, high school math. And, well, that's basically it. You have a dancing snake with many colors. To learn more details about how this works, read the article.